Welcome to the Naturally Nourished Podcast, which delivers cutting-edge food as medicine solutions for optimal health. Allie Miller is a nutrition expert sought up by the media and America's top medical institutes for her revolutionary functional medicine interventions. From disease treatment to prevention, every episode will empower you with ways to put yourself back in control of your health. Please note, the topics discussed are for educational purposes only. Now welcome, Integrative Dietitians Allie Miller and her co-host Becky Yu. Welcome to the Naturally Nourished Podcast. You are joining us for episode 241, Summer Travel Tips. So summer is right around the corner and I know you just went on a trip, Allie, so I'm sure we're going to cover that in today's episode. Um, But we try to do an episode like this every summer or every so often. It looks like the last one was back episode 86, which was summer... Three years ago or four years ago. I guess not every year. (laughs) Yes. Um, But still a lot of the same information I think pertains and maybe some new tricks now that Steli is a little older. Yes, absolutely. So a lot of y'all were asking, we did a trip at the end of March over into Easter weekend. And a lot of you were asking, you know, what kinds of activities did you pack for Stella? I mentioned that we did 17 hours of car travel with no screen time. And that was kind of shocking to some of you. So I'll share with you great activities to keep your kiddos entertained as well as snacks. And then considerations on ways to boost your immune system as well as for adults and and kids in the household really supporting metabolic health making good trade-offs and getting all of those indulgences which make the special elements of travel stand out without feeling crummy and like you have to hold yourself out of a ditch when you return home right. from your vacation because right. you want to feel amazing in your body at all times while you have an amazing time yeah Um, And, you know, with Noah being just more food driven and more mobile these days and, and, you know, becoming increasingly so over the next couple months, I think we're thinking about a trip around like just prior to his one year birthday, maybe in August. So I'm sure that's going to be really different than our last trip, which was at three months on a plane where you needed no snacks. Right. And now you need snacks. I just breastfed him and he slept the whole time and it was no big deal. That's when I remember distinctively, oh no, Stella was like, let's see, I think seven months old. And that's when she was cutting some big teeth and we were playing Frankie Beats, her little guy. Do, do, do. Oh, Frankie Beats. And it was like on repeat. And it was like, sorry guys, you either get to hear Frankie Beats on the plane or you get to hear my baby crying. So Frankie Beats it is. And I'm sure you'll have something like that for Noah. (laughs) Yes. Awesome. I also want to share with you guys uh, our Fredericksburg itinerary in this episode because a lot of you I know are Texas people. And if you aren't, I definitely recommend traveling to the great state of Texas and checking out Hill Country. So we'll have some ideas and our favorite spots because Becky and I just returned from a trip with our families there. And then, you know, we'll just talk about getting on track from pandemic and all ages and approaches and rock and roll. All right, so before we get into it for today, let's just have a quick word from our sponsor for today's episode, Wild Foods. Yes, so Wild Foods is a food company that puts quality, sustainability, and health first in all of their products. They have all of our favorite pantry staples, so everything from coffee to turmeric to medicinal mushrooms to teas and beyond. Every single product is going to be painstakingly sourced from small family farms around the globe, and they take their mission very seriously to fix the broken food system by voting for their with their dollar. And they believe, like we do, that real food is medicine. So they've partnered with us to give you all an exclusive discount when you use the code Allie Miller RD at checkout. You will get twelve percent off of your order. Some of the favorite things that Becky and I enjoy from Wild Foods is their wild matcha, which is of course a fine powder stone ground tea leaf having 10 times the amount of nutrients locked inside the green tea leaf when ground up and in a ceremonial grade of matcha like the wild matcha is, you're going to get a bright, robust, grassy flavor with 
10 times of the amount of the EGCG, the L-theanine. So we're getting that metabolic antioxidant boost. We're getting that brain support for stress response, as well as a nice concentration of caffeine. And then they also have fabulous teas that are non-caffeinated. My favorite is the Thai G, which is a green rooibos tea with ginger, lemongrass, and lime. Um, I've actually played with doing that in a smoothie using full fat coconut milk and kind of playing on like almost like a Thai soup flavor profile, really fantastic, um, with a little bit of frozen organic mango. And then if I'm getting decadent and I need a brain boost, I love their Cocotropic. So this is a wild superfood elixir. It is a delicious blend of wild cacao, so raw chocolate, with reishi and chaga mushroom extract, as well as maca powder to support that pituitary gland in the brain to support stress response, thyroid, sex hormone, balance. It also has wild turmeric in there. So you're getting that anti-inflammatory boost and really a nootropic effect. So cognitive and mood enhancement, as well as support for mental performance and less caffeine, you know, and epinephrine or adrenaline surge than you'd get from coffee, all balanced with that adaptogen of the maca and the mushrooms to support immune health and be anti-inflammatory and so much more. You can use that uh, cocotropic as a swap out in any of our recipes, like the avocado brownies, I like to sub out a quarter cup of the amount of cacao for Cocotropic to just add some more therapeutic support for whole body and mind health. Um, so if you like real food and real ingredients and you want to support small farms around the globe and check out some of Becky and my favorite pantry staples, go on over to wildfoods.co, that's .co, not .com, put in the code AllieMillerRD at checkout and you will get 12% off your order. All right, and before we get into it for today, two updates for you guys. So first and foremost, this is the last chance to join our 12-week Food as Medicine Ketosis program, and this is the last round for 2021. So if you were banking on doing it in the fall, it's not going to be an option again until January, which is a ways away, and you can still absolutely join through the end of this week um, will yep. allow, I don't know. Through the, the end of the month date. of May. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, through the end of the month of May, and you can absolutely catch up on the two classes that you've missed. We archive everything. Um, there's a lot of action going on, on on the Slack board right now, so you guys don't want to miss this. Pop on over um, to Allie Miller RD slash ketosis hyphen program, and you can grab one of those last final spots. Yes. In fact, if you even are on a wait list to work with Becky or myself, uh, this may be a better bang for your buck. As we always say, you know, an initial consultation uh, with me is starting at $495, whereas a spot in this program is $299. And you do get the combination of both of our brains for that 12 week period of time. You also get discounts of in-clinic pricing on labs. So you get like $250 off of the MRT test. You get discounts on supplements and you really do get to learn about deep dive functional medicine topics. So we nerd out, as y'all know, in all of the things, uh, but this program entails HPA access, fight or flight response in stress, adrenals and thyroid, and how that impacts metabolism. We talk a lot about sexual hormone balancing and using carb cycling as an approach. We delve into metabolic flexibility and understanding what your carb threshold is. We talk about cardiovascular health and diabetic management and prevention and so much more. So go on over to AllieMillerRD.com slash ketosis hyphen class grab a spot. We'd love to have you. And in the world of clinic, I will note um, that as you're listening to this at end of May, that uh, we are taking new patients as well and that there are openings. Becky's calendar, she's added in some uh, Friday half day mornings. So she does have availability more like six to eight weeks out instead of that kind of treacherous six month window that Uh we sometimes hit. So uh, definitely take advantage of that as well. If you know you need more of a tailored one-on-one approach, um, you can go on over to, that's at naturallynourishedrd.com and you can click that green button, become a client, fill out a patient profile, and we will get you in as quickly as possible into the Naturally Nourished Clinic. Yeah been a while since I've been able to say that. So ramp it up. Exciting. (laughs) Um, And then last but not least, right now we have going on our summer beat the heat promo on all of our probiotics. Um, So we now have 
six probiotics total in the Naturally Nourished line. I can't believe it. Um, and they are all on sale right now so that y'all can stock up before the weather gets super hot. And typically in the summer, even though we have extensive testing on our probiotics that they are stable uh, beyond even 122 degrees, which I will link in the show notes, a new page on our website that talks all about probiotic shipping. Um, Even though they likely would do okay, we do recommend overnight shipping during the summer months just to make sure they get to your door all intact with all of their live active cultures. So what we're doing right now up through June 5th is we are giving a buy two, get your third at 50% off sale to stock up on your probiotics so you don't have to pay for that expensive overnight shipping during the summer. So this would be a recommendation to just get as many bottles as you're going to need to go through the summer. Um, So for most people, we're thinking, you know, three bottles-ish. You might split those with a family member. Yep. Or if everyone's on a different probiotic, you might want to go ahead and do a couple of of orders. The promo code for that is just BEATTHEHEAT21, and that will get you 50% off that third bottle. Awesome. All right. So getting into today's topic, first things first, Let's talk about location because I think there's some new considerations of like where we might want to travel given the current times. Yes. So for me, I will say a huge thing that I look for with travel at this time is no mask mandate and uh, really allowing freedom and liberty and the ability of my family to smile in public and not feel shamed or, you know, in a space where they're actually through jurisdiction or area trying to mandate masks, especially outside or Mm -hmm. areas where it's, it's seemingly more draconian. So that's a huge area that I'm looking for is no mask mandates, ideally in the state, definitely in the area. I'm always looking for natural beauty um, and something different maybe than the region that I live. So for me, getting ocean and beaches, since I live in Texas hill country, you know, that's that's a dynamic for us. Um, looking for health supporting activities. So hiking, swimming, uh, bicycle paths in the area that work for the whole family. Um, horseback riding is always a bonus and something that I enjoy doing. And maybe even things like surfing would be something to consider. So what types of health supporting activities or hobbies or particular experiences are there in that area? And then I also tend to look for uh, farm to table restaurants or quality sourced foods. So as I'm researching the location, I'm gonna look for a farmer's market in that area. I'm gonna also look at literally, I just Google farm to table, you know, Austin, for instance, or we were um, in the area between like Destin and Panama City um, in Florida. And so I was just searching, Pan- I was searching, you know, farm to table restaurants in, you know, Rosemary Beach or watercolor or whatnot. And um, that's a really great way also to understand kind of the ethos and the type of environment that you'll be in if there's more of that readily available. Um, I always search for a place I'm a really big fan of, especially now. Um, when we traveled, we drove from Austin to uh, Rosemary Beach was our first stop. And then Miramar Beach was our second stop. And so um, it was quite a drive and we did need to stay in a hotel. I actually found hotels that said, you know, I looked under their mask requirements and it was masks are available instead of required even though all of the signage still said required mm-hmm. on the door, I've just gotten to the place where I don't know how to read tyranny and I just look right through those words and function as a natural, healthy human and someone's going to have to ask me to my face. And if which they do, I'm probably going to smile politely and say, oh, I'm exempt. Thank you. Now, where is the check-in desk? Um, or just follow up with a question and that kind of puts them in a position where they're like, oh, uh, and then they yeah. answer you and you just go on your way. We pulled that in Ikea. Uh, Becky and I were in Ikea recently um, up in Round Rock, Texas, where they have no mandates. Um, The governor of our state reduced the mask mandate March 10th. However, Austin, where Becky and I both live, our um, mayor has increased the mandate. And I think it's even through June and it's still going. Like, I don't think it's ending anytime soon. 
Um, anyway, ha, huh, la, la, la. Um, and so Becky and I drove up to Round Rock um, to go to Ikea. And um, we were the only ones that I saw, right? I saw one of guy. hundreds. One guy. Okay. Of hundreds with of people, like a though. bandana around his neck still. Sure. Like, we don't even mess with the semblance. No, there's no, mess. like... Uh, ear, you know, hold anything. No, no look of virtue signal in my book because I think that that just perpetuates this, you know, positioning. So anyway, in IKEA, a woman, uh, we we were there for like thirty five minutes or almost forty five minutes, and a woman like came up with like a a plastic container and tongs and the like disposable PPEs and was like, oh ma'am, can I can I get you a mask? And I looked at her and I said. Oh no, I'm exempt. But could you show me where the bedding is for <laughs> for twin bed mattresses? And she just kind of was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, of course. Come follow me." And then was just like delightful and peachy. And um yeah, so that's just kind of been my MO there. I think we're going to do a whole episode coming up on civil disobedience and, you know, ways to stay sovereign, especially as we're getting into this next fall school year. A lot of moms are hitting me up on, I'm feeling anxious that this is the time that we need to be writing the school board and telling them that we're not on board with mask mandates in our school for fall of 21. Um, So we'll do an entire episode, I think. I think it's past due and just updates on, you know, the injections and all of the things. Um, But either way, I, I generally like to stay, regardless of the times and the bad season, in an Airbnb because I like to cook. Um, but if I was to have to stay in a, um, hotel, that would be something I would search for as well, which sure I was able to find. Yes. Um, so staying in a place with a kitchen is great. Um, I always search for like a natural grocer. There's one of those in Fredericksburg, which is great. Um, but honestly, we're shopping more and more at HEB these days because they're not mandating the mask mandates, whereas Whole Foods is. And so I'm going to vote with my dollar. And, um, you know, in Florida, we shopped at Publix. And honestly, most grocery stores that are a, a, a sizable um, location are going to have still your grass fed ground meats, your wild caught frozen fish, some organic section of produce, and then some staple ideas. Um, definitely quality eggs can be got, can be purchased. Um, pretty much everywhere at this point, organic yogurt and et cetera. So I think just searching for a grocery store within 15 minutes of your location of your place is important because you don't want to be driving all over on your vacation. Um, And then generally a rule of thumb that I go for, which we'll talk a little more about dining out strategy, but is dining out about one meal a day and then focusing on quality. So that's where like I would go for fish in Florida, I think of the seven or eight nights we were there, I had fish six or seven. Um, and so choosing fish out is great. Again, grass-fed ground beef, subbing starches for non-starchy veg. And the big thing is eating out one meal a day instead of two or three. Goodness, I think three is just way too high of yeah. intake and stressful to the body. Yeah, we used to do a lot more like fasting where we would do like a small breakfast and then fast like throughout the day and then do kind of a dinner and cap of the evening that was out Um, but it'll be interesting to see how our rhythm and what we look for in a vacation shifts with Noah now um, because we used to take these like three-week adventure trek trips and I don't see any of those happening (laughs) yeah anytime soon at least Um, let's talk a little bit more maybe about just dining out strategy and um, kind of navigating based on uh, restaurant menus yeah. So again, I think it's about being mindful of how you how you feel and what your objectives are. Like if your objective is to go all out and stress your system and have a belly ache and get constipated and feel annoyed in your body, then go on and do you. <laughs> but that's never me. I'm just way too in tune with my body where if I overdrive or over push my system I'm going to feel uncomfortable or even worse miserable and then I have a poor mood and then I have a poor experience and I'm not enjoying myself on the trip so I'm really mindful of swap outs and certain like non-negotiables whereas there's some areas where I have leeway so for me you know I am non-negotiable with gluten exposure like there's never going to be a product with gluten that's worth it for me because I feel like there are razor blades in my belly if I get exposed to gluten. It, it's painful and it really drives chronic constipation and, and GI stress. So that's one that I'm pretty on top of not going to do a swap out on. 
Um, and in the same sense, I might be a little bit more flexible in carbs. Um, so I am mindful of carb overload and I want to kind of select my carbs. And if I'm on a week long vacation, which is very rare, usually they're weekend trips. If it's a week long vacation, I don't treat every meal like it's a meal on vacation Yeah, (laughs) in the sense where it's like, Ooh, what's, am I going to get risotto with truffle? Uh, You know, that would be like a big carb up because if I was to eat risotto, I I wouldn't clear the portion they would give me, but they might serve me a cup. And, you know, I would make sure that I had scallops or some form of protein with that. But for me, as I'm saying risotto, I'm like, that's like a gluten-free, delightful indulgence that I enjoy. Whereas for me at a restaurant, I'm never going to choose sweet potatoes because I make sweet potatoes all the time at home. And they're probably better. Honestly, (laughs) right. So, you know, like for me, it's like that's not worth a swap out. Sure. Um, A flourless chocolate cake might be worth to split that with Stella and Brady with a delightful, like, you know, robust red wine and cap the night. That might be worth the carb choice. Um, So I always kind of weigh out what are my indulgent meals going to be. And I literally am so nerdo. And, and with these times with restaurants just kind of getting back at capacity and whatnot, you often do have to pre-set up your reservations. Mm-hmm. And so I nerd out to the level that like I look at the menus and I know like, oh, these three are my like big hit going all out meals. And if I'm quote unquote going all out, that means I'm probably doing a, a starter, which is a non-starchy veg, like shishito peppers or roasted Brussels sprouts with like a fun kimchi or something funky and delightful. Um, or maybe I'll do like a yummy hummus with crudite. It just depends on what their starters are, but I might do a starter. Um, there's a restaurant in, uh, Wimberley that I love that does these fried olives and they're in this cassava flour. So it's gluten-free and that's like, a, again, indulgent starter. Um, and so I might choose a, ha- a starter that I would split. I might choose a cocktail and a glass of wine. And then, um, you know, I'm probably going to choose if I'm going to do a dessert, I'll swap out my starch at that meal for a non-starchy veg or a side salad, or I might go for the starch at the meal and not do the dessert. Sure. And that's my indulgent version of dining out. Yeah. And I think having that plan, like you said, in place before you go to the restaurant, so like looking at that menu ahead of time and just kind of knowing what you're going to order, even having a backup plan in case they're like out of something or there's a special that sounds great. Um, and, and then, you know, doing splits with the people that you're dining with. If you're dining with people with similar, you know, dynamics, like we always will split things more so than even with our, splitting with our husbands, Allie and I will like split an entree yeah. <laughs> between the two of us. It's our eating style. We like yeah. more flavor, more textures, yeah. more experience, if you yeah. will. Yeah. And I guess if I wasn't doing as indulgent, I would probably split a salad and then just do my entree and then just stick with wine and not bring in the cocktail element. And, um, because honestly, if I'm on vacation, I'm probably going to be drinking all of the nights. Um, but again, more moderate than more of the like, woo, starting with a martini or a low carb mark or something (laughs) like that. Um, but when I'm seeking restaurants, the big thing that I focus on is sourcing and quality. Yep. So I want to make sure that there's wild caught fish or, you know, again, local wild caught fish or just wild caught fish, depending on if you're, you know, central in, in the country or whatnot or on the coasts. And then looking for some form of like heritage roasted chicken from blah, blah, blah farms, or, you know, again, Wagyu grass-fed beef. And especially if the restaurant has in their about section, I'll often like muse and read on their like, we love partnering with local farms and this and that. And there's pictures of (laughs) the people we work with and our purveyors. Um, That's really where I feel like it's worth me voting with my dollar. And and that's me really being able to experience the regional cuisine and what's provided in that area. Yep. Um, And yeah, reading lots of Yelp reviews and seeing like pictures of the food helps too. Um, But always seeking out to just interesting flavor profiles, um, people who know what they're doing with their veggies. I feel like that's big, like, you know, well-cooked vegetables and, and just getting that abundance of flavor and texture. Most definitely. So in the supplement world, if we're supporting a little bit more indulgent eating than normal, the things that are pretty non-negotiable on my travel list is the GI lining support. 
So GI lining support is going to have that L-glutamine, that DGL, and um, also the aloe. And so this is an anti-inflammatory kind of leaky gut tool, if you will, to support gut repair. And so often, even if the restaurant is clean, I may do a scoop prior and post when on a vacation because again it's a long haul (laughs) and I don't want any like Achilles heel I guess I want to be really kind of sealed and have my tank solid if you will and I'm often not sipping bone broth on vacation which is a change for my normal habit Um, so the GI lining support is a big key there generally I do just travel with a tub um, of both GI lining and a tub of relax and regulate. I have put scoops out in um, where I count the scoops into a Ziploc baggie and included the scooper in the baggie and that works just fine as well. Um, and I've also used like little reusable containers um, like from Target. They have a lot of those like cosmetic mm-hmm. size containers. So like a face cream container might work for a size. Um, just watch it with air travel with the a white powder that's not labeled um i've even had recently or our most recent flight they it was a sealed container relax and regulate and they still needed to test it for residue i'm like i'm a mother traveling (laughs) with my supplements come on guys so that i would be mindful of of planes like keeping the label on there but otherwise yeah i dump it into a bag i've never had an issue i've never had an issue um and then digestate is huge as well um so digestate is of course our digestive enzyme and that's what i take anytime i'm dining out it has that dpp4 to aid in breakdown of the inflammatory components in gluten as well as casein so it can help with you know i often will eat higher dairy if dining out um, or uh, making sure if there was any cross-contamination but digestate also has the ox bile and the HCL to really create that perfect environment on a chemical level. And then all of the enzymes, uh, proteases, lipase, and amylase to break down protein, fats, and carbohydrates respectively. Um, So this is one that I might even take a double digested if it's like that more indulgent day to make sure that I don't feel like I end the meal like, oh, so bloated and just like with the stagnation in my belly and feeling like there's a brick sitting in my belly. I like things to move. So that's really key and also kind of a defense to protect against um, inflammation with your intake. And then I would even layer in berberine boost if I am doing anything that is raw in the world of meats, like a tartare, like a um, steak tartare. Even if it's good quality grass fed, I'm still going to take berberine boost, as well as raw fish, especially things like oysters, which are higher risk for contamination or, you know, serious bloodborne illnesses. Um, so the berberine boost, I would do like two prior to a meal to support both on the the antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, um, and also to mitigate a yeast flare from higher carbs. So if I was doing like that risotto and um, I also had um, a cocktail that maybe had like elderflower or something funky, you know, a little bit of sugar in it or whatever, I would definitely take berberine with that meal so that I don't have as stress of a blood sugar spike, Mm -hmm. but also to support and prevent any yeast overgrowth which is even more important if we're thinking on summer travel and swimsuits. Yeah. So I just want to just keep this conversation rolling into the women's flora probiotic um, because a lot of the time I see women returning from summer travel with UTIs yeah, or, or yeast BV infections. or yeast yep. infections. Yeah. So the women's flora, and, and honestly, like, I mean, we have to be mindful when we're getting in like lakes and rivers and other areas yeah. that we're exposing our biome to that. Um, so this may be a time that you'd want to actually insert our women's flora probiotic. Um, and we had just come out with this in March. So this is the baby in our line of our six probiotics. And the women's flora has the um, Lactobacillus raminus and the root rutery or ruteri and these are two strains have been clinically studied in both prevention and treatment of UTIs, BV and yeast infections. And so during summer travel, I'm definitely going to be taking that at rise and at bed while I'm still taking my targeted strength probiotic and maybe even rotating in my restore um, excuse me, my rebuild uh 
spectrum probiotic. Uh, but then that women's flora, I would do as a vaginal insert a couple of those nights um, and just wear a panty liner and it self dissolves. But that's really important if you're doing like beaching and swimsuit or stuff, yoga like pants. On your honeymoon or a time uh-huh. you're having more sex, like, a, you know, get away and yeah. left the kids at home with grandma. I think that would be a good one to also have just, you know, if it's been a minute and all of a sudden frequency increases. Yeah. And even long road trips. Yep. Like if you're someone that likes to wear yoga pants or yep. thongs and you're sitting for a long period of time and it's like just, I got to say the word moist and <laughs> and just an undesirable, you know, you know, area in there, you're not getting breathability. Um, women's flora probiotic is your best friend in the summer ladies yeah. just yep. saying yep and then i would call out the berberine and rebuild spectrum probiotic for any like international travel where there's higher risk of food or waterborne illness i know there's not a lot of that happening right now but if you're like going to mexico or something like that i would be really mindful to have those two packed most definitely all right so let's talk about maybe like what an actual day in the life would look like. Um, so a couple of, of meal breakdowns, if you will. Yeah. So often I'm not, I'm probably only going to eat breakfast out once on a vacation. I don't know about you, Becky, but for me, uh, unless there's something fabulous. really fancy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so for me, I, I, again, especially if I'm staying in an Airbnb and I get my own eggs, I'm either going to do, you know, a fasted morning and get outside, right? Like, so I'll, I'll travel with my Redmond Real Salt and I will start my day with some salt and my supplements at Rise. And then I might like look to bike or walk to a coffee shop. Um, I also will bring a French press because a lot of Airbnbs like only have Keurigs and I don't mm-hmm. do those plastic pods. Um, so we, for this Florida trip, like pre-ground all of our organic coffee, kept that in an airtight container and then brought a glass um, French press which worked out really beautifully Um, so either we'll make coffee at home or go walk and that's like the thing and then I'll go get a cortado um, which is like a one-to-one ratio of espresso and whole milk Um, so it's like a neat like max four ounce amount of liquid and a nice tight um, flavor profile especially if it's like a good local espresso roaster or whatnot I like to kind of experience that Um, So I I usually will do that to start the day and then I'll probably have that first meal back at home, um, which might be eggs and veggies. It might be more of an adult lunchable model, especially if we have a lot of kids. So I had um, Stella who's going to be five in June and then her two cousins um, and uh, they are eight and five and then the other half of the trip we had a two-year-old and a 11-year-old and a 14-year-old. Um, and so what works really well in that kind of model, especially if there's beach involved, is um, having adult lunchable stuff available. So, you know, buying quality deli meat. We travel with organic salami often mm-hmm. and also like meat sticks. Um, and then, you know, there are some of the like some of the parts of the boar's headline you can get nitrite free and pretty clean. Um, a lot of now the grocery stores are doing like the in-house roasted. And so I've, I've found Neiman, um, Neiman ranch ham at like conventional grocery stores as well. So some form of a protein from a meat stick or a deli meat or a salami. And then, um, I might get like aged cheddar or, um, sliced cheeses or organic string cheese sticks and then uh, some veg. So we often do carrots, cucumbers, and bell peppers as our kind of go-to for easy and don't need a lot of temperature support. Um, And then I might bring like olives, and then usually we'll bring some crunchy, salty stuff. So like Simple Mills, cheddar, or plain almond flour crackers. We might do um, some of the Siete chips. Um, We might do the epic pork rinds or the 405 pork rinds, especially if we want like an indulgent thing with like the jalapeno cheddar option there. Um, What are other big things we do for lunch? Guac are like my big like beach snack that Uh I always like to have. And you can get, you know, if you don't have the Airbnb kitchen to make it, that's something you can almost always find in, you know, even the most conventional of of grocery stores is like a pre-prepared guac Mm -hmm. um, in their deli section. Yep. And should be pretty clean. They might have citric acid in it, you know, good, better, best, but, but not going to be an abomination. Um, So definitely that's something that can be brought in as well. And, And the adult lunchable model would work 
And that could also be then positioned to evening if you decided to go out to lunch. So maybe you walk somewhere and have a yummy salad and um, a, a protein like roasted chicken on there or salmon. And then that evening meal will be more snacky with like wine charcuterie kind yep. of style for the yep. adults. And so maybe you buy brie and like a nicer fancy cheese and that still feels indulgent, but it's still cheaper than dining out. Totally. Yep. Um, and I love doing a burger night. We, we always do that. So we did that with both sides of the family, um, a burger bar night where we just make up a bunch of grass fed beef patties. There was a grill at both of the houses. Um, so pretty easy there. And then I'll just make some sweet potato fries or something like that yeah, and have like bacon and pickled onions and like fun toppings to top with or a truffle aioli or something like that just to change it up. Yes. And then you can always be on this continuum of clean, clean, clean. You know, so we've talked about the considerations in the world of vegetable oils and cooking oils. And that's where something like an omelet, you know, like at a diner can get sticky because A, the question is, are they using whole real eggs or like an egg mixture? And I don't want that in my body. So often if I am to dine out for breakfast, I will request A, I'll ask if they have whole eggs and I'll request that they cook it in real butter and um otherwise and i'll just say oh i have a corn allergy and then otherwise i will um just ask for poached eggs and then you know like slices of avocado or something like that and that's a way to kind of steer clear of the industrialized oils yeah if it's a poached egg it has to be a whole egg it can't be like the sneaky yes. mixture right you have yes. to see the whole thing whereas like scramble and omelet right. kind of vague there yep. yeah 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 um, let's maybe talk a little more about this Florida trip recently with Stella and Brady. And you said it was, was it 17 hours total mm-hmm. in the car? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and you also did a, uh, trip to Colorado Springs in the car as well, um, early fall. So maybe let's talk about why car travel and, um, how to survive it with a young one as well as some of your favorite activities for her and snacks yeah so I think I'm gonna have to add a lot of fun stuff to the kids section of the Amazon store yeah. because I haven't really done since Stella was like two and a half and now there's a whole new array of like the four to six threshold age of activities and such but you know we Stella used to fly all the time and Um, I always had a little bit of concern as far as EMF exposure. You know, there's a lot of radiation actually that occurs when a airplane takes off and lands. And um, I would always, uh, you know, not put her through the body scan check and I would always opt out and walk around and have them do the little wave wand deal and, and try to mitigate as much as possible. Um, but I'm really a big, a big proponent of car travel for a couple reasons. Um, now, especially in the bad season, I won't mask Stella, so I won't fly with her because it's looking like they're maintaining mask mandates as right. a federal mandate for ages two and up. Um, and we've seen a, a lot of um, just really traumatic experiences of parents getting kicked off and shame and all of the virtue that comes with that and I just don't want to deal with a stressor in my travel that makes me feel like I'm white knuckling or at an anxiety like experience before I even start my vacation or to get home so for me road trips are great um we Brady is like a master at playlists so we really enjoy listening to music as a family Um, We also will even listen to like books on tape um, or now like audible download, but like (laughs) kids stories we've done, um, which is really fun. Like Pete the Cat, um, we did a bunch of that in our car trip. I'm a really big proponent of no devices on laps um, because the concern is the EMF, especially in the child's sexual organ gland area and digestive uh, organ gland. Um, So I don't like the whole like iPad or laptop on the lap um and i won't give stella a laptop or ipad anyway she is allowed to do some ipad activities on brady's ipad when we're at home but if you open that into a car trip that's 14 or 17 hours that just then becomes like the go-to and i feel the same way with dining out Um, for dining out we really try to limit the screen time as well because your child then is in an isolated environment they're not a part of the community experience so they're less in tuned to the environment of the restaurant the conversation at the table the social skills eye contact all of that and i think that kind of isolation and checking out 
um, also has some neurological influence, A, the dopamine of the blue light exposure, but B, also just the social skills um, and just it becoming a, a handicap, I feel, you know, as far as children's development. So we just make that staunch rule that there's no screens in the cars and we make sure that our cars aren't the ones that have like the screens. One time we rented a car that had those like screens oh, yeah. in the back of the back <laughs> seats or whatever. Stella's like, what are those? I was like, I don't know. They don't, they don't work. I can't get them to turn exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, to be fair, I did sit in the back seat with Stella's the whole time. So like she okay. had me, you know, 24 seven. Um, one thing that we really like to do is use, um, the stainless steel cookie sheets that we have and magnets. So we have all the fun magnets of like people and different like occupation outfits so there's like the surgeon and the military guy and the teacher and the soccer player and so there's like all the wardrobe changes and that creates a a great environment for pretend play and um really imagination for sure um once you have magnets, I mean, there's letter magnets, number right. magnets. So the, and the cookie tray thing's great because it holds them in. You know, you, you have it so that you have that little lip. Um, and then you can just switch out baggies of magnets. I basically travel with like a box. Um, I'm trying to think of like the dimensions. I don't know. A, a reasonable size, like just a little larger than a milk crate size box. And I will pick out like 15 books to put in there. I'll put in her activity workbook. So she loves to do like actual like kindergarten school workbook, readiness with numbers and letters, um, as well as um, we like the Melissa and Doug sticker spirals. So there's anything from like pet shop to like fairies to ocean play. And, and for girls and boys, there's um, you know dinosaurs and all sorts of fun stuff and different scenes that they can stick and restick the stickers on. Um, we use the me reader tablet, which I believe I have, uh, put that on the Amazon store, but I'm not certain. This is like the old school, um, where it's battery powered. So no EMF. And it it basically like reads you like from frozen, like eight different books, you know? So it it allows like, if she does just need that, like check out, like clicking buttons, but it has no bright lights, no screen. It's just a cardboard (laughs) and plastic tablet. Our childhood. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, so that's an option that she can kind of do on her own. Like if she wants to just like hear a story read to her. Um, and then, uh, yeah, lots of books and workbooks. This, um, Florida trip, we did a whole terrarium experience where we had like, like, like different Play-Doh clay packs and built this like fairy garden thing, which was pretty cool. Um, and then we just keep a lot of fun snacks to mix up. Like for Stella, pretty much every two and a half to three hours we do a little snack breakup and um we end up kind of breaking up our road trip to max at seven and a half hours is the longest we'll generally do in a day um so we're always going to spend one night overnight we'll always find a playground that's something that'll actually google map and add in as a destination so she can run around and you know do her thing and then we'll have a snack outdoors and then get back in the car for maybe another three and a half hours or something like that and it ends up being really a a fun adventure okay so what other snacks are, are in the, the back seat? Um, what are you doing these days in the car? So perfect bars are a big one. And I rely on these on an on-the-go breakfast option. Um, so these are fantastic um, where they're pretty high in calories. So like for me, I'm only going to do half of a perfect bar or, you know, maybe I'll just wait it out where Estella I would give a whole perfect bar. Um, and she likes just the peanut butter one, the, the peanut butter chocolate chip. Um, there's so many delicious flavors. And I have to say in their line, I've been obsessed with their peanut butter cups, which incorporate like a superfood and still have protein in them. And they just came out with a chocolate mint one, which I have not had thin mints in over 20 years, I'm sure. Uh, but it was my favorite Girl Scout cookie and the chocolate mint peanut butter cup is phenomenal. It's, it's pretty close. To yeah. A thin mint. I mean, it's kind of everything. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I love those. We travel with those as like an indulgent, like three o'clock and they have really good coarse salt on there. So it's just kind of a nice, so Brady and I would like split a pack or I'd be like, Hey, Stells, you want to split a peanut butter cup pack with me? And we'd each have one of those. Um, we often have, like I said, the chomps meat sticks. We travel with our own packs of salami, um, Epic bars, meat bites, Um, and then also this trip, a friend made for me a chicken salad, which was awesome. And so I had like a whole Pyrex container 
of like a rotisserie shredded chicken salad with green apple and spinach and green onion. And then um, I had just like veggie crudite for that. We do travel with a Yeti cooler, but we usually only travel with like the half size, not the full big uh-huh. trunk one. Um, because we're able to kind of pack things in and a lot of the foods aren't temperature controlled, you know, so like our berries would go in there and our Greek yogurt and the chicken salad. But then we have a shopping bag where we'd put the Simple Mills crackers and the apples and, um, so forth. Right. And you would restock like once you get to your destination, hitting a grocery store. So it's not like you're carrying in all the food for your whole trip. Yeah, most definitely. And that's what I kind of like about, like, I think the salami is kind of most temperature controlled. A lot of it's sold at room temp. And so until you open that pack, right. you know, yeah. and so you can have four packs on the road and just open one pack at a time. And I think that that works out really well versus like, you know, if you bought deli turkey, a little more questionable for sure. And yeah. like that chicken salad was done within 24 hours, you know, so it was like, that was the first lunch on the road. And then I ended up having it the second day for lunch and I did bring it into the fridge in the hotel. Sure. And then, you know, kept refilled the ice in the cooler. Yeah. Um, and then travel coffee, you said bringing your like um, French press or are you doing like cold brew in the car? Yeah. Sometimes we'll buy just like the, um, uh, I think they're like double servings of like the chameleon cold brew yeah. glass bottles. Um, or I'll even bring like a loose tea and a tea ball because um, I know that that's something that works really well for me. I might bring a couple kombuchas on the road as well. And we can link the travel snacks blog for you guys, which has a ton of other ideas. Um, Something we discovered on this trip was the Simple Mills pita chips, which are like cassava with celery root and parsnips and just different. It has more root vegetable flavor profile. Um, And that was a fun one that we did just kind of mixing up with our, again, adult lunchable kind of model. I have not tried them. All right, so let's talk a little more about um, just kind of supplements of priority. So we went over the ones for um, dining out mitigation, but how do you prioritize your supplements? Do you like bring everything with you on the road or how does that work? Yeah, good question. I mean, I know I do. The answer is yes, (laughs) because again, I want to feel amazing on my vacation. Like, you know, I don't even want to mess with my hustle where I wouldn't bring my B complex, you know? Um, So the way that I travel though, is I actually do combine all of my rise supplements in one bottle. And it's because I really know what they are. You could take a picture and like, you know, have a little code system. So I know that I'm taking like my cell antiox, my CoQ10, my B complex. They all look very different. You know, one's white, one's opaque orange, one's um, yellow. Um, And then I'm going to take my like inflammazyme and um, the bio C plus at that time. And then my lunch will be my multi-avail mama with the, um, I have calm and clear in the morning as well. And then the, um, the first meal would have more calm and clear, the multi-avail mama, um, the adaptogen boost in there, and maybe the other bio C plus and cell antiox. Um, and then I have another section of like as needed formulas. So I'm always traveling with detox packs because like I said, if I'm on vacation, I'm going to likely be drinking alcohol and maybe like in the evening drinking wine and playing cards or something like that. In fact, one night I gave all my family members a detox pack and the next day they were like, that was amazing. <laughs> that worked so your well. Brother, um, yeah, my brother who like convinced. won't take any supplements, <laughs> yeah, was like, whoa, Al's. It's like, yep, that's right. I got some good shit, man. <laughs> um, so the detox packs are definitely a non-negotiable and I may take one at rise and one at bed, just kind of depending on my choices. Um, so I don't travel with ultimate detox, whereas I use that at home, kind of more pulsed in. I just bring the detox packs. It's way easier. I always travel with Gabacom because even though I'm not dealing with the airport thing, I'm just dealing with stuff. And, um, you know, I, I just sometimes, especially now, not understanding maybe the vibe of a certain location or having interpersonal drama or feeling anxious about a new activity or whatnot. I love to have Gabacom available. Um, and then I um, tend to have inflammasome. You know, I don't always travel with super turmeric. Um, I've had some incidents where super turmeric has melted when I've left it in the sun or like a hot travel bag. Um, so I often do inflammasome, which is just more of a standard capsule. But if that's one that I was taking daily, I'd, I'd probably keep it in. It's just super turmeric sure. one that I personally pulse. I do travel with the omega-3 EPA DHA extra for sure. Yep. So 
the answer is I travel with all the things. <laughs> I separate my with food and my without food. Yeah. Um, and I do combine like all my probiotics. So I'll bring like one bottle yeah. and it will have, you know, like eight of the, the um, rebuild spectrum. It'll have eight of the targeted strains, 16 of the women's flora. And luckily all the probiotics look quite different as well. Yep. And, you know, if you're someone who's taking a ton of, like, calm and clear, you might not need as much on vacation. I don't know if you find that, that you can, yeah. like, titrate it down a little bit. But I don't think it's one you'd want to be without on your vacation. Yeah, I mean, my kind of rule of thumb is if I'm not traveling with my laptop, which wasn't the case in Florida, because, I, I mean, being an entrepreneur, you can never go more than three days without working. Yeah. It's just kind of a rule of thumb, unfortunately. But um, generally, if I'm not traveling with my laptop, I can about 50% reduce my calm and clear. So instead of taking eight to 10, I can take four to six, which is great. A normal person amount. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not trying to run the world. Oh my gosh. Um, and let's just hit on maybe um, a little bit more in terms of like what your pharmacy for travel yeah. should entail. I know I talked about the berberine and the um, spectrum probiotic, but just with travel in general, you know, immune distress can happen and um i know you know i've been to some places where i don't know about food or or water quality or foodborne illness so let's talk like essentials for traveling abroad especially yeah so we hit on you know both the rebuild spectrum and targeted strength probiotic and berberine boost but i would also layer in the herbal immune the herbal immune especially if we're looking at the timing with respiratory viral risk. The herbal immune is a really great defender with the um, lemon balm and the oregano in there and the thyme and sage. Those compounds, a lot of them antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. Um, and because it uses those essential oils in a concentrated form, there is a little bit of that dys dyspepsia where you might belch <laughs> the flavor of those fresh herbs, which I find to be somewhat pleasant. Um, but that belch process, you know, you're really expelling or breaking those essential oils also in that targeted area of the respiratory system and that upper GI area. So that's one that I would say would be a good thing proactively, especially on like a high volume travel day where you're in a dense environment of people. Um, and that also could be one if you have like phlegm, mucus, or cough or anything like that. Um, Brocco Detox is one that I would also consider in addition to the detox packs because the Brocco Detox can help to combat against like H. pylori and also have that support for gut bacteria um, as well as aiding in the detox process. I tend to take bio C plus all the time because of the adrenal support that that provides me because vitamin C helps support cortisol, but that would be another one to focus on. And especially like in the chlorine, um, for kids, I like to mix a bio C plus, uh, capsule for Steli into like yogurt with raspberries. Um, the taste of the bio C plus is phenomenal because it has that acerola cherry. So it's actually really easy to get into children. So you could mix that if they're dairy free, you can mix it into nut butter balls or whatnot, but it really will help to give them a, about 600 milligrams, which is one capsule of vitamin C. If they're over 60 pounds, you might do a full gram or two capsules and, um, really important to help to mitigate the susceptibility to toxins, especially like those that are transdermal, like the chlorine that can be passing through the skin. Um, and then along that vein, I also would think of glutathione and cellular antioxidants. So cellular antioxidants could be mixed in, you know, that same said bite of food for the child or the adult would definitely want the bio C plus and cell antioxidants if swimming more and such. Um, but you could also use a transdermal glutathione on younger. So probably like for Noah flying, right. that's something yep. that I would do at this age for sure. Um, and then keeping their general supplements standardized as well. So they're still getting their kids multi-avail. They're still getting the kids biotic and the vitamin D balance blend. Um, and then the last thing I would note in this vein is um, for the upper respiratory support, um, allergies, which are different in each region, right? And also the um, viral defense, um, a nose spray. So either doing that X-Lear, which is just the saline with grapefruit seed extract, 
or the colloidal silver spray. So we'll link both of those in the show notes. And I like to do like five to six sprays prior and post, especially if again, hiking in an area with high pollen or going to a big stadium and wanting to just clear and keep the nasal passage moistened, that's going to prevent um, adhesion of uh, any viral particle, so less reproductivity likely and likely less severity of infection. And also, you know, if you are traveling and have to mask during a flight, I think all the more reason to do that because, you know, as you know, that mask is like holding everything in. Um, So making sure to use that like prior and post and maybe even taking a break in between depending on length of your flight um, and like spraying that I mean honestly even with the the flying I think I mentioned this um, after my December travel I was able to sit there first of all with my mesh mask on from Sissy Lala um, and no one said a a darn thing to me Um, it's a triple layer mesh so you can't really tell that it's mesh but it is darn breathable Um, I was able to sit there and basically have like a giant smart water in front of me the whole time. And like, I forget what snack we had, but it was something that you could eat like a a tiny bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Byron had like pork rinds or something like that. And I was literally like, you know, putting a teeny piece in my mouth, like every time someone walked by, just so it would be like, oh, still snacking and drinking over here. Um, but trying to do that and like plan for that, especially if, um, you do have to mask on a plane. And that's very hopeful because I've heard people that have had stewardess that literally say you need to put your mask oh, yeah. on af- between bites. Between bites. And, and I saw a guy doing there, that. And they'll stand there and stare at you. So I Yeah, guess. we flew United and had no issue. And I've heard Delta's pretty good too. So Okay. And then the last thing I'll say in the world of like chlorine and considerations. Um, so preventing sunscreen is, I mean, excuse me, preventing sunburn is one thing to to definitely consider. And so, um, I do like the beauty counter spray sunscreen. It's a good non-toxic also ocean and reef safe, which is important if you're going to be on beaches. Um, and it just goes on really easy and thin. And then we're big fans of like the longer sleeve UV protection suits. Mm-hmm. Just It's just so much easier. You don't have to reapply it. It's good coverage. The hats, like the summer hats, still is always rocking those. And then um, we might even consider doing coconut oil on her body um, to just kind of help offset and create like a lipid layer to prevent that transdermal impact. Okay, so just to wrap things up, I want to talk about activities during travel, maybe some priorities and considerations. And especially with our most recent trip to Fredericksburg, let's just highlight some of the stuff we did. Sure. So like I said, I often choose a place based on something that has beautiful landscape or nature or time outside. So one thing that I love about Fredericksburg is it's a total slowdown pace. Um, you know, aside from drinking wine, which is one of my favorite activities, one of my favorite extracurriculars, (laughs) uh, you know, you, you, it's not just drinking wine, it's sitting outside, listening to bluegrass, um, laying on a blanket, Stella blowing bubbles, you know, there's just a really romantic slow down energy. And so I love spending of my day. If I can spend eight hours outside, that's a win. And that's something that I try to achieve on vacation. And then I am also always trying to get passive steps. So if we're at a winery, you know, we might go walk around with a glass through the win- the vineyards, or I might play uh, tag or freeze tag with Stells, or, you know, kind of bop around and making sure that I'm always getting 10,000 steps minimum daily when we are on vacation. So we're walking to playgrounds, um, we're window shopping, always, that's Becky's favorite extracurricular, oh, yeah. I think, yep. um, and uh, hiking and doing whatever we can to submerge into nature. In Fredericksburg, uh, we went to a wild exotic zoo well brady and byron did and becky and i went horseback riding which was super fun so we got up early that day and i took stella to natural grocers uh, which is a fun natural foods grocery store and probably stella's first time in a grocery store in a long while uh, because in the in the florida trip she hung out with the cousins and otherwise in austin like i said they have man- maintained the mandate so i won't take her to the grocery store in a masked environment 
So natural grocer Stella got to go with me and like hang out in the cart and was so pumped and talked to the woman checking us out and got a sticker and it was like a big experience. So oh, we picked, totally. yeah, you know, she's like, Ooh, that lady was really nice. She liked my cheetah pet, you know, like she had her little everything cheetah. And so it was kind of fun. Um, so we picked out a fun flavored grass fed yogurt and I had that as like a light breakfast. Cause I knew with the horseback riding, we'd be out in the beating sun and, you know, didn't want to get too depleted and just be fully fasted. And I knew on the heels of horseback riding, we were going to Signor Vineyards and I never think it's a good idea. I've done this many times. Take it from me. It's never a good idea to drink wine from a fast. Um, it doesn't matter how much butter or coconut oil you put in your coffee. If it's nope. a fat-fueled fast, <laughs> you need something to stick to your ribs. And preferably, maybe even beyond that grass-fed yogurt, um, having right away with that wine some aged cheese. We did have a container of like truffle cheese and Marcona almonds and olives. Um, so right away with the wine to not have like that naked carb glycemic spike, but also to kind of help the body to not A, get too drunk or B, just be able to metabolize and slow things down. Um, at that vineyard, it was, it was beautiful. It was the first time we were there. They had a pond you could walk around, beautiful property, live guitarist. And then um, Becky and I walked around downtown, bought some t-shirts, all sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> Any other things to share with that, Becky? I don't know. <laughs> got our steps for sure um, yeah the window shopping will do it <laughs> yeah and the thing in Fredericksburg which is fun is they have all of their tasting rooms downtown mm -hmm. kind of dispersed between the shops and all of Fredericksburg had liberated the mandate so they had like cool signage that would say like masks are optional or you know your body your choice or whatever um so that was pretty neat in fact one of the shirts that we bought what was the one about compliance it's uh, non-compliance Mm -hmm. Good question. The first step, stop complying. I yeah, think. the first step, stop complying. And I Becky and I were it. like, team t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting yeah. one for everyone. Uh, there's a great place on the strip that I like called El Milagro. And they have always live music, good bands. I usually get wine there. Um, it's like a pop-up Mexican food restaurant. But I've never had their food, so I can't speak to that. I'm not sure on you know their marks. I usually just get like a, a dry white or rosé. We had their guac, though. That was, we did have that their was guac. solid. Like if you're having a cocktail and there's nothing, you know great on the menu I think that's a good option to at least get something in you <laughs> yeah and the first yep. night in Fredericksburg we did grass-fed burgers a salad from my garden Becky brought a ready-made a ball jar of salad dressing <laughs> bless you <laughs> Um, I tried all that one. In. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. And then we made sweet potato fries, no buns, obviously, and we did guac the night before too, yep. a homemade one with um, a crudite. So the second night we did go out. We went to Chase's place. Um, that was a good farm to table. We had like lamb chops and quail. Um, and then we also really like Otto's. Um, Otto's has a sister restaurant, Tubby's. All of them have pretty good sourcing, and even the burger joint on the strip has a grass-fed burger option. So since we had done burger night, we just did kind of light bites that evening, and that's kind of how the day unfurled. So most of the window shopping was like indoor-outdoor, horseback riding was outside, the vineyard was outside, sitting on the patio with the live music was outside, and a lot of walking and bopping around and laughing with the kids in between. Okay, and let's talk about maybe a few more of our favorite wineries in Fredericksburg. So we shared a lot last episode on wine love with dry farms. Um, and there are actually a lot of wineries that are sulfite free or biodynamic or at least sustainable, um, no added sulfites, many that are, you know, estate grown and small farm focused right here in Texas, which is amazing. Yeah. So William and Chris is one that we are a membership in a member to, or have membership to, and, uh, they do not add sulfites to their wine. Uh, Lewis is another one that I like that's kind of off the beaten path and it's um, earlier uh, like right after Johnson City in high I think even earlier than high technically I'm not sure uh, they require an appointment so does William and Chris um, but both are really beautiful properties both are very friendly with children which is important I think you know you never want that like snobby pretentious vibe when you're trying to relax in hill country I always like yep. a little more like Texan <laughs> with my vibe uh, and country versus, you know, like aw, kind of vibe. Um, I love a good uh, wine tasting and explanation of the terroir and the experience, but it could be done in a family vibe for sure. 
Uh, we really enjoyed Krausen, which is in Johnson City before you hit Fredericksburg. And they are actually a zero impact winery. So they actually add nothing in the fermentation process. The yeast that they use is the natural yeast from the grapes growing on the vine themselves and whatever is living in the air surrounding the fermentation process. And really fun, like this white wine that we got from them has really strong smells of like apricot and stone fruit but it's really dry um, there's no sweet on the taste there's no sugar added to any of his wines and he was a really cool dude very accommodating to Stella and Noah and um, had three kids himself so it just always feels it's like a small um, bungalow home that you taste in there which was pretty fun Hilmi is another one of my favorites. We'll put links to all these. So if you have a friend that is going in the area and they want recommendations. And then French Connection is one that I haven't tried, but I've heard really good things and that that's more of a, a natural option as well. I think it's a big recommendation to not try to do more than two, especially with children. I mean, more than three is quite ambitious. Um, and yeah, especially if you're tasting at all of them. Yeah. Or if you're with a partner, maybe you like rotate who right. tastes and, and who just has like a sip of the other person's or whatever. Right. It's not <laughs> a, a competitive sport. No. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be a leisure activity. So I think, um, you know, treating your body right in the process is important as well. And all of the detox packs in between. Yes. Yep. Um, let's round out just talking a little bit. Obviously, we covered some hangover prevention measures um, last podcast, but maybe just the idea of, you know, alcohol and dining out a day on the go, like how you balance and trade off those indulgences. Yeah. So I think for each individual, you determine what your compromise, your non-compromise or never compromises are, you know? So for me, that's like I said earlier, gluten, it's definitely refined sugar, candy. Like I'm, I can walk by a, a candy store and have zero like eyebrow raise. Like there's nothing exciting about that ever. Like taffy and like, yeah. I don't know, gummy no, stuff thanks. and whatever. <laughs> um, and Whereas like maybe a good quality dark chocolate, that's one that I would say is the only thing in the candy sweet world. And same with dessert. I'm very minimally going to go for a dessert. Now that it's kind of fun with Stella as almost age five, like a creme brulee, um, which is often pretty reasonable. There can be a good amount of refined sugar in it, but a creme brulee with fresh berries or a flourless chocolate cake would be the thing that I would split and I would be doing it with Brady, Stella, and myself. Right. Or like a grass-fed ice cream, like lick ice cream. Yeah. And, or finding the local ice cream shop while on vacation if it's, you know, good sourcing and, and quality ingredients. Yep. And the thing with the ice cream, you know, is that it's made with heavy cream, so it should have enough fat to at least kind of support a good metabolic impact. And I always get like the tinier the kids. Pretty much after you've had like 10 small bites, you've hit that experience and, um, you know, the rest of it is just going to be that excessive calorie intake and kind of stressor for your body. So trying to aim for sticking within 30 grams of carbs-ish portion of any of those indulgences I think is key. And I think it's important to just question what is your goal or desire? Like, are you going for crispy salty? Are you going for savory? Do you want to experience something dynamic in like zip lining or an outdoor adventure? Um, if so, you want to watch and maybe spend a little bit less time outside the day before or, you know, watch your choices the evening prior. Um, but really figuring out where it's worth it for you. For me, often it does end up being um, like wine, especially in Fredericksburg, would be my primary indulgence. Sure. So like I'm yeah. never going to really get a dessert in Fredericksburg. I'm not going to go for a lot of fanciness in the food. I'd rather like have my indulgences, pack my snacks to the wineries, and then just have like a simple meal kind of thing. Yep. And I think time-restricted eating is key. Just being mindful again about navigating that if you are consuming alcohol um, but really having just like two meals a day and an optional snack with vacation or, or, you know, travel, I think is important and just incorporating movement, movement, movement. So passive movement is fantastic and getting that minimum of 10,000 steps can really add off and, and offset that extra indulgence of probably 500 plus calories of consumption that you may not even realize just because of the restaurant intake. And then when you return from travel, I think we both do something pretty similar. The first thing we do is like head for some fond bone broth usually. Yes. Like I'll do that literally as I'm like unpacking 
getting the laundry going, kind of getting reset for the next day, just like heat up an entire jar and, and sip on that. That just feels really good, especially if there's been wine consumed. Yeah, even better, extra credit if I can incorporate an Epsom salt bath that yep. night. So I might do like a quick shower with Stells, get her down, and then like do an Epsom salt bath soak. I would absolutely level up the detox packs. And, you know, so I might even do like a three to four day detox instead of the full 10 day detox, just to have the focus on getting those food as medicine therapeutics in like the cruciferous vegetables. So I'm I'm craving things like cabbage slaw and a salad and these bright acidic flavors, bitter herbs and such. Returning to green smoothies is something I'll do usually for like five days in a row as one meal, um, just because it's kind of anchoring and I'm not into as much of the snacking because I just did adult Lunchables pretty much the whole time Mm -hmm. of travel. (laughs) So returning to green smoothies as meal one and then that second meal just being like a lot lighter, easier to digest and maybe even considering, depending on how off the rails the intake was, a bone broth fast for three to five days and, you know, incorporating those detox packs through that and maybe doing just like one lean green meal plus, you know, two quarts of broth as a full on reset. I used to do that before I had a kid. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Now it's like, when eh. the travel was more dynamic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you just can't do that because you have to get up at 7 or 8 a.m. regardless right. of what you, what choices you right. made. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. no choices are worth it. And right, like that's a consideration in the non-negotiables. The non-negotiables being a present, awesome, fun mom. Right. Um, I don't want to feel haggard and disgusting in my body. So I'm going to make choices that respect and honor my body so that I can feel amazing and connected and have beautiful memories of my family. Family. So it's all about the experience, um, not necessarily about the indulgence at this stage. Yeah, I think that's that's a good note to close on. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so if you like today's episode, just a kind of lighter, fun one. As always, we appreciate when you go on over to iTunes or wherever you're listening and leave us a five-star review. Um, we have tons of reviews now, Becky. So maybe we'll read a couple featured ones uh, next episode. So leave a fun one. And um, we always appreciate your feedback and support. Go on over to AllieMillerRD.com to take advantage of the Beat the Heat promo. You just have a week and a half left to do that. So that's where you buy two promo probiotics and you get the third one 50% off and also last call for 2021 in the 12 week food is medicine virtual ketosis class if you want to learn a deeper dive on functional medicine and how to make your metabolism work for you make sure you snag a spot today thank you for listening to the naturally nourished podcast visit our blog at allymillerrd.com for recipes wellness tips and food as medicine meal plans. Connect with Allie and Becky at Allie Miller RD on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, stay nourished and be well. <laughs>